He's unpredictable, and he's always entertaining. Well, Casey, man, you, you already are a cult hero. I mean, there's millions of people in America that are, that are, that are really angry because, because you pissed them off. <laughs> there's a lot. Of, sometimes they bleep out words. Now Steven Tyler's revealing the highs and lows. Uh, he's endured as frontman for this group called, I think it's pronounced Aerosmith. It's all in his book called Does the Noise Inside My Head Bother You? A rock and roll memoir. Steven Tyler, a true rock star. Steven, what a life you've had. Being a rock star, is it all it's cracked up to be? Wow, I could answer that another way, but I won't on television. <laughs> uh, it is. I love the ride. Once, once you get, someone got that, huh? Once you, uh, once you go on the ride, you get addicted to it. Like, I'm honestly addicted to adrenaline. And have been since the days I left the clubs and went with Aerosmith, but on a so much bigger level. So, um, yeah, it's all cracked up to be that. Uh, you wrote Dream On. That's the one song I was in fifth grade, and I'm not Mr. Rock and Roll guy. I was waiting to grab onto something that would make me cool. And I said, this group, Aerosmith and Dream On, Mom, can I go to Sam Goody and buy it? You made me cool for that brief moment in my life, Stephen. It made me cool, too. It wasn't <laughs> a hit off the first record. No one saw it as such until the next album, you know? I kind of got that melodic sensibility Every time, and the way I played the piano from my father's uh, Juilliard classical roots, Bach, Brahms, Debussy, and then where I threw myself into the mix was I came up with this chorus and something to sing goes, Dream on, dream on. I thought, no, I'll just do the dream on. And from, the rest was is history. I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep that in. And of course, good old Joe Perry said, why not? Yeah, keep so, that guy around. Uh, Steven, in your book, does the, uh, does the noise in my head bother you? Uh, uh, you have a whole new chapter. Um, mainstream America is embracing you on American Idol. Guys like Kid Rock and Joe Perry didn't want you to do it. And do you think they, uh, have they called you up and said, I made a mistake, Steven, this was a great move for you and for the band? Uh, Kid Rock's holding to his, sticking to his guns, you know, uh, because I don't think he sees that... Uh I mean, if you don't, don't want to do this, then why do it if you're a rock star of another genre or another ilk or another sort? And I just wanted to do this because there's so much more than just that, the guy in Aerosmith. Stephen, in the end, you write a memoir. It's not all great stuff. You talk about your addictions. You talk about everything you've been through. Why chronicle it? Why be so transparent? Why be so honest? Are you worried you might turn some people off about the, some of the stuff you did? You know, I thought about that. Was it going to blow the mystique of Aerosmith? I mean, whenever we are, we wrote Sweet Emotion for a reason, because the emotion was sweet, if not bittersweet. So I decided to write about the bittersweet emotions because it's epiphanous to me. It happened to us, to me. Uh, this whole life has been a journey. I pinch myself all the time, and I think, thank you, God, for the gifts. I just wanted to share some of them. It's not all drug addiction, people. Uh, it's, it's about... Um, it's about adversity and, and coming out through the other end and, and how to attract more flies with honey than vinegar. And for the young bands to always carry a briefcase around because lawyers and managers don't always have your best interest. And how that worked with us.